Okay, welcome back. Today I'm making a lumber cart. This is long overdue. It's going to primarily carry sheets of plywood and partial sheets of plywood. I'm using 2x2 two two inch tube. I bought a ton of this tube when I got my new shop just to have to make things with. And I've made a tremendous amount of useful carts and tables with it and I really like it. I'm going to continue to use this 2x2 two two tube. It's sort of creating a standard look for the shop. In this video, I was feeling a little lazy. I didn't feel like bending down at the bandsaw. And so I'm just using the cutoff wheel. This is a six inch cutoff wheel I got from DeWalt in the, the 20 volt, or well, the 60 volt max grinder from DeWalt. And I only needed one charge during this whole thing, believe it or not. And I used that same disc for the whole entire project. It got a little bit smaller, but not so small that I couldn't keep using it. And this is 16 gauge, so it cuts fairly easy. And as long as you have a good right angle, you could follow it. You can pretty much get a nice cut. I had a second grinder set up, a plug-in grinder. On it I had a 36 grit Cubetron grinding disc. That's really just a flat sanding disc. What's most important when you see me cutting here is that I have the guard on. This is a, the 6 inch guard. This cutter comes with one or the other, the 4 inch or the 6 inch. And it, the guard, not only is it important to keep from getting injured, but I'm actually using it to hold. You'll see how it kind of helps me guide right there. I'm holding it most of the time. It actually creates a nice secondary handle. And you see the, the lap joints I'm doing there? I'm making lap joints that are going to cap the end of the intersecting tube. And um, using the MP210, and it's a little difficult to weld this. you got to make sure you set it the right gauge so you don't blow through. And if you do blow through, I sort of have this technique where I kind of use, I call it the scribble weld, where I just keep scribbling over the open hole and eventually it starts to fill in. And uh, you'll notice when I'm welding the thin walled stuff, I tend to do a series of tacks connected together and it's really controlling the melt, so controlling the, the melted molten steel, it's really important. And uh, if I'm having a problem, I just move to the other side of the weld. So I'll go from left to right to left to right to left to right. There I did a nice weld. Fillet welds are always nice and easy. They always tend to come out really nice. And now I'm going 3D. So basically I cut all my, my metal. And I'm making a lumber rack. And I'm going to start with this big L shape. That's the bottom, which is facing me mostly. And the top, which is on the right side of the screen. And I didn't cut the, the piece that I'm, that's missing in that corner there yet. I wanted to make sure I had all this welded together. And I knew exactly what that dimension was before I cut it. So I cut it just off camera there. And I got it to be a snug fit. And I got that dimension right inside the, the frame, right where under the vise there, that, that segment there. And I made sure it was the same on the top and the bottom. And this is what I was talking about when I'm welding left to right. Otherwise, I would have melted through that. So I'm going left, right, left, right, left, right. And while I weld one, the other one is cooling off and I keep going back and forth. That's a little technique I developed. I guess that's a, developed out of being a bad welder, maybe. I'm not sure. But when you weld thin wall stuff, it's always difficult. You run the risk of setting it too low, you don't get good penetration too high, you end up melting. So it's a, trying to find a happy medium. And there's the electric grinder with the 36 grit disc on it. And once I grind all these welds in, I have a nice clean capped corner. Now you might say, why don't I just do a 45 degree intersecting a 45 degree? That's because the two sharp points that make up the outermost corner are too fragile. When you weld them, they just immediately melt backwards. So here I am ending up with full sheets of sheet metal, or full thickness of the 16 gauge, being welded to the 16 gauge. Otherwise you end up with a feathered sharp edge and you're trying to weld that in and it immediately rolls back when you start to heat it up. So now here I have my cart and I was kind of sketching this out. I had a loose idea. I knew I wanted to start with this framework that you see sitting there. And now I'm making what's going to be the, the legs, or the, the, the carriage that's going to carry the wheels, I should say. And I had a set of casters that I took off of a box I found in the garbage many years ago. The box was huge, as you can imagine, by the size of the casters. It was a, maybe it was like a scenic box or something used for some sort of scenic company. And it was in a dumpster, and I climbed up there and I unscrewed these casters, because these casters are about $30, $40 each. And you'll see the heavy-duty casters. So instead of drilling after I weld, I'm drilling before I weld. And you'll see I'm going to bolt these to the casters, then put the casters where they're going to live, and then I weld them in place. Now, I could weld the casters straight on there, but every time we weld casters in place, it's, it's always problematic. You end up burning all the grease out of there, and you're getting some, some slag inside of the bearings. So they're 
I'm welding near them, but I'm not going to weld onto them. And you see I tack weld underneath, and the bolts ended up being a little bit close to that 2-inch tube, so I weld around each one of them in the event I have a need to change these casters. Because they are used, and they seem fairly sturdy, but if I have a need to change them out, I could unbolt them. And one good thing to remember is that I fabricated this, and, and in the world of this object, I am God. I can cut off the wheels and put new wheels on. I could change. I could modify. So it's funny. When I make a video like this and people say, well, you should have done this. Now you're stuck. I just fabricated this from the scrap bin outside the shop. I could change it. I could do anything I want in the future. And that's uh, one good thing about being a fabricator is that nothing is ever really done. And I'm capping those holes just for style. And I cut a quarter inch piece of steel that I had. I sanded it and ground it so it fit right inside. I put a little taper on it so that when I bang them in, they get snugged up. And now here, I'm taking that rack and I'm tilting it back 10 degrees. And I wasn't going to try and guess that all four wheels were going to touch the ground perfectly. I welded one side and now I am on the level ground. And I'm making sure that all wheels ride the ground and they do. And now I know I'm set and now I'm going to weld that second side on. So I did one side and now in place on the ground. Not on the bench, I'm welding the second side in place. This way it assures me that all four wheels will touch. And now I'm just shoring up that weld from underneath, putting a lot more tacks. I put two tacks on the outside and more tacks on the inside because these will be in the, uh, the, the force will be splayed to splay out. And I put more welds underneath so they'll be in sort of tension, if you understand what I mean. And so now I'm just adding some more ribs to the bottom of the cart. This was... This wasn't exactly what I had in mind when I started. I had many more ribs in mind, but I figured, let me just put two in there and then build a forward brace. And I think that might be enough for plywood. And in time, if I need to modify it, I will. But I've already used it, and it seems pretty good. So I'm going to have two corrals. I'm going to have the back corral for full sheets of plywood and the front corral for smaller sheets. And you see here again, I'm just using that angle grinder. Not Nothing fancy. Not using any crazy band saws and using that 36 grit to give me flat edge and you notice here this is me just doing that splice again just doing it all with the grinder by hand and you see there and then I'm doing my tack welding and again jumping around where I know I can when I'm right against the bend inside the end of one of those tubes I can really blast it but when it's two ends of sheet metal together I got to do my tack method otherwise I'll melt through Sort of flat gave me that table and, and all those angles and those things are invaluable when you're building something like this. You see how I have it braced together and the weld pulled it a little bit out of square so Brett brought me that clamp in to pull it back into square and I got everything in place. And this thing is, is very very sturdy but just as in a matter of insurance because five or ten sheets of plywood are extremely heavy I'm just putting this back brace so that all the force is shared amongst the the braces that carry the wheels and I cap the top of these tubes as well and you'll see the back the back of the uh, the wheel braces I did not cap just because they'll be against the wall all the time and so since these are faced up I'm capping them see I capped one and I'm capping the other one in the background just tacking it and then grinding it into place and now everything's ready to go. I think I'm good. I'm going to take it for a little ride. Those wheels are great. Again, those wheels are about $40, $50 a piece, maybe $30 a piece. If you had to buy them, I found them in the street. And now what I'm doing here is I'm using the red Scotch-Brite to clean off the rust, the surface rust. And then I blow it off. Just blow off everything that's there. And then I use acetone to give it one clean wipe down. And acetone gets it nice and clean and I get it ready for spray paint. And in this case, I'm using Rust-Oleum, which I don't typically use, but I wanted a high gloss, and I like the high gloss of a Rust-Oleum, and so that's what I'm using here. This is uh, inspired by the Lincoln Red. I wanted a little bit of color in the shop. I typically paint these things black, but in this case, I was looking at the Lincoln Welder. I was like, let me, let me go with that red. It's really nice. And I took two cans, maybe three cans is with the touch-up, so three cans to cover this up, and one coat lays perfectly on top of the other coat. And considering these wheels were used in a little beat-up looking, I just covered everything with red. 
And there it is. Beautiful red. I didn't want to mar the logo with a spray, so I used one of my clean stickers. Get the branding in place. Now I have my very own plywood lumber rack. This is going to live against the wall, so I'm going to keep it loaded, and when I need to, I'm just going to pull it out, take off what I need, and then push it back into its parking spot. And there you see with about 300 pounds worth of wood on it. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something this time. Thank you guys.